This video took place in Aitutaki in the Cook Islands. It's a small little sandbar in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I travel the world for kiteboarding and finding the perfect combination of smooth water, consistent wind, a comfortable place to be, and a really beautiful backdrop is kind of the dream. And I came across the Cook Islands a number of years ago. Amongst the professional kiteboarding community, people know that it's a, a world-class destination. If you were to essentially see a postcard of paradise, you'd open your eyes in the Cook Islands and you'd be there. Crystal clear water, white sand, palm trees sticking up into the ocean. It is like breathtakingly beautiful. And on the day that we shot this, a huge storm had come in. And all of a sudden it took this dream location and kind of gave it like this fiery flare, which for kiting is awesome because all of a sudden now we're super overpowered. We're able to jump huge. And it's just this paradise in a hurricane almost. And that's where kind of I come alive. Everyone around you comes alive because you feel just that energy in the air. And that's, that's where you see the Cook Islands have so much, so much to them. And they're such a beautiful location in any kind of weather condition that you'll find. Being out in the elements, being surrounded by extreme conditions and so focused on what you're doing fuels me to, you know, to embrace everything. And it really helps me find a flow like I've never found before. I'm dancing with Mother Nature in the most extreme conditions and that's what gets me higher than anything else. This is the street house located on the northeastern part of Switzerland in the area of Lucerne. Switzerland is very well known for wingsuit base jumping. It's like the most pristine location, the main location for accessing the sport. Accessing the line is quite treacherous. It's a line that is actually secluded up, up, up in the mountains, and it requires quite a bit of hiking away from your car. First of all, we need multiple vehicles because we need to leave vehicles in the main parking lot, then we need to take a ride up to the up, upper parking lot, which is, I don't know, two or 3,000 feet up higher on the mountain. From there, we all get in this little milk cart, which is a cable cart that takes you up the mountain. We pay seven francs to the person that is cattling the sheep and everybody out there in the farm, and we go up there. Where the telephone drops us off, then we hike for around an hour and a half, two hours, onto this ridge line that exposes up on top of the cliff. After we jump, we start flying on the wingsuit and we go through the mountains. We are truly just being part of the element. We are enjoying the landscape. We're watching the beauty of the trees. In this moment, when we are flying down this mountain, and all the trees are changing because it's fall. So all the colors of the trees, then we come down and then the huge lake opens up and you can see the end of the valley into the Alps. Oh my God, this is amazing. This is why we fly. This is one of the best experiences I've ever had flying. These locations I'm snow kiting, I travel to every season. They are my favorite spots. All these are filmed in the Rocky Mountains. There is no guidebook, there are no runs, there are no specific snow parks or anything along those lines. It's more just wilderness, national forest, and other public access, as well as some private accesses that we get permission by the landowner. The snow kite locations that I have picked all line up perfect for wind and terrain and just the direction of wind and the snowpack and there's so many variables and I feel like these locations are pretty much as good as it gets in North America. I have traveled other places and not been as pleased with the conditions and it keeps me coming back to these spots. It is such a rush. You give a fist pump, you yell out a Yahoo, and you unfog your goggles usually because you're huffing and puffing so much, and then you end up getting back up to the top as fast as possible to do it again. When I first started snow kiting, I didn't think I'd ever want to jump higher than 10 feet off the ground. It scared me. And I find myself years later, 100 feet off the ground. The passion that brings me back to snow kiting day after day, year after year, is I've never found anything like it. I grew up skiing and snowboarding since I was two, and my whole life has led up to strapping a kite on me with the wind.
videos of players uh, lead us off in France. During the winter time, it's for skiing in the summertime. You can go there for climbing and biking and paragliding. You have three or four different lines which you can fly from and take off. Not as the usual lift areas where you have one takeoff and have one line which you can fly down. Normally, when you hike up, you can do one or two laps per day. There in Little Zab, you have something between 1,000 and 1,500 meters on altitude difference, which you can completely go by lift. It's really nice. You have easy lines over there, rally lines, which are not that steep, where you can easily get into proximity flying, so close, where you can easily make your first experience with flying close to the ground without bringing the wing in an extreme situation. On the other side, you have really steep canyons where you really have to work to stay inside the canyon. This is way more dangerous because you can lose a little bit of control when you're rolling inside the canyon to stay inside. Yeah, I got the control of the road to get into it, so it was for me a big moment. It's a really great feeling. It's like the snow you have to get when you're under the wing. I think especially when you're into the flying moment, it's kind of meditation. It doesn't feel extreme. It's an amazing feeling.